G'day and welcome. This time we're going to find out what happens to a parabola, or how we graph a parabola, when it's no longer centred on the origin. You might recall from last video that we learned how to graph parabolas like this one, where we had a number in front of the x squared. Uh, what we didn't look at yet are negative ones, but we'll deal with that in, in, on another occasion. But we looked at graphs like these ones. By the way, this can also be written as x squared on 2 because this is half times x squared and x squared is x squared over 1. So we have 2 times 1 on the bottom and 1 times x squared on the top. So whichever you prefer, I actually prefer this notation, but this is very, very common. Now, what we're going to do is learn to graph parabolas that are not like this, that are not centred on 0, 0, but are in fact centred somewhere else on the graph. And this is how it happens. If I alter the y value, for example, by subtracting 1, and if I alter the x value, let's say by adding 2, Let's see what this does to the graph. Okay, we have our axes labelled, we have the origin, we have a scale on both of our axes, and we're going to graph this. Now, I'm hoping you've seen this before. These videos are not intended to teach you everything, but they're intended as revision. This is still like a y equals x squared graph, but it's been tampered with. Now what's happened is this, before we square, before we square the result, whatever the x value is, we add 2 to it before we square it. So for example, if we started here at 0, before we squared 0, we'd add 2. And if you, add, if you do 0 plus 2 and then square it, you get 4. So this has been moved up to 4. I'm not talking about what's happened with y yet. We'll just pretend that's not there for the moment. If x is worth 1, instead of 1 squared, we've now got 1 plus 2, which makes 3 squared. So here at 1, we now go up not to 4, but to 9. If we went back 1 to minus 1, what is minus 1 plus 2? It's plus 1, and 1 squared is 1. So here, it goes through 1. At minus 2, what happens to minus 2 plus 2? Minus 2 plus 2 is 0, and it behaves like 0 squared. When you put in a minus 3, minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1, we square that, and we get a plus 1. And when we get to minus 4, you'll find it goes through plus 4. Can you see what's actually happened to our parabola? It's exactly the same shape, exactly. Cross 1 up 1, cross 1 up 3, cross 1 up 5, but it's been shifted that way, two units away from the origin. That's what this does. When we add 2 to the x value, it behaves, this point behaves as though it's there. Another way to think of it is to say what value of x would make this think it was 0 and think it was at the vertex of the parabola. Well, if x was worth minus 2, minus 2 plus 2 would make this 0. 
So at x equals minus 2, it thinks it's at the vertex of the parabola. Now, it has not changed the shape of the parabola one little bit. Now, interestingly, this part does the same thing with the y-axis. And I'll just get on this side. If we ask what value of y makes this look like 0, the answer is 1, because 1 minus 1 makes 0. And it turns out that when y is worth 1, the parabola thinks it's at the origin. So when we were graphing this parabola, we were just looking at this. But when we fiddle with this as well, the y value is tampered with, which moves the parabola up and down. And this parabola thinks the vertex is there. Not here, but there. Because when x is worth minus 2, minus 2 plus 2 is 0 here. And when y is worth 1, 1 minus 1 gives us a 0 there. That's where it thinks the origin is. So if we tried to graph this parabola, this one, we would look at that to get x equals minus 2. We would look at this to get y equals 1. And then we would say the vertex is at the point minus 2, 1. There it is. Once we know where the vertex is, we can simply graph our parabola. Across 1, up 1. Across 1, up 3. Across 1, up 5. Back 1, up 1. Back 1, up 3. And back 1, up 5. So you can see that knowing that odd number pattern will help us graph the parabola quite nicely. I'm going to do that one more time. Now notice, not all of your parabolas look like this. This is only if they look like this. And uh, you're going to learn the skill later. I'm going to show you how to complete the square, which is the terminology we use, to actually make a formula look like this so we can graph it that easily. But let's just graph one more. I think you'll enjoy doing it. Now I'm going to be a little bit mischievous and introduce you to an extra idea, a second idea while we do this. And I, uh, it's one we've seen before, but we're going to do this y plus 2 equals x minus 1 squared, but I'm going to put a 2 in front of it. Now we did 2x squared graphs before, but now we're going to combine that idea with this. And as you can see, this is looking more complicated, but it's really not as bad as it looks. Notice, if we look at this term, this part of the expression, the origin is going to be where x equals 1, because 1 minus 1 will make that think it's a 0. And here, the y value we need is negative 2, because minus 2 plus 2 makes 0. Therefore, the vertex is going to be at 1, negative 2. So let's draw that. Vertical axis, that's our y-axis. Horizontal axis, that's our x. Origin, let's put a scale in. One, two, three. I doubt that we're going to go very much further. One, two, three. We're going to go one, two, three. I've got a feeling a minus three might have just been off the bottom of your screen there. One, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, that'll do. There we go. Where's the vertex? It's going to be at 1, negative 2. There's our vertex. No longer at the origin, because this sort of uh, form this sort of structure in an equation moves the origin. 
Now, it's told us all the information we need. We know where the vertex is. The 2 now tells us how steep the parabola is. So instead of going in jumps of 1, 3 and 5, sorry, our odd numbers, 1, 3 and 5, our jumps are going to be doubled in size. So they're going to be 2, 6 and 10. So let's start here and do it. We go across 1 and up 2, across 1 and up 6, I suppose if we went to 4 and cross 1 and up 10, we almost get to 16. We can probably fit 16 in. That's a long way up. There it is. So there's, there's our jump of 2. There's our jump of 6. And there's our jump of 10. And if we went back, you should do this in pencil, by the way. But if we go backwards, it's back 1 and up 2. Back 1 and up 6. And back 1... So we're now at minus 2 and up 10. And then we would draw our graph. I might do this one in black this time. My goodness, that's going to be steep. Okay. A bit hard to do by hand. But there we go. That's a bit lumpy there. Now... Before we go, just let's check this out. We're only going to look at a few points. Not all of these. Let's, let's look at um, 0, 1, 2 and 3. How about that? Because they're easy to substitute. Let's check it out. I'm going to rearrange this equation. Get rid of this now. Because I can subtract 2 from both sides and get y equals 2 lots of x minus 1 squared take away 2, minus 2, just by moving that. Let's substitute. Put in x equals 0. What's 0? What's 0 take away 1? Minus 1. Square it, we get plus 1. 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 take away 2 is 0. Is that? Yep, that's right. Let's put in 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 squared is 0 times 2 is 0. Subtract 2, we get minus 2. Let's put in 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. And 2 take away 2 is 0. And let's put in 3. 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, take away 2 is 6. And let's just verify these are the points that we go through. 0, 0, 1, negative 2, there's our vertex, 2, 0, cross 2 and 0, and across 3 and up to 6, the point 3, 6. So you can see that even without drawing a table of values, we have located the exact points, the correct points for the parabola. I'm not going to dwell on that anymore. Uh, I encourage you to look through your textbooks or ask for your teachers, ask your teachers for equations of this form that you can practice graphing using this technique. And uh, in following videos we will start to explore a bit more generally how to analyse parabolas. Please leave a comment, like the video, and please, if you're not a subscriber, I encourage you to subscribe so you can find out about the next videos as they appear. And as always, I thank you for watching.